Have you ever encountered a hurdle with launching or growing your business? Listen, there are two things that run a business, the back end and your soft skills. I'm telling you right now, if these aren't in place, you'll lose clients and you'll lose money. You don't want that? Well, you're in the right place. Hey, I'm Dana. Hey, I'm Sarah. We're your hosts of the Entrepreneur Encounter, and we're going to give you a behind the scenes glance into our businesses, give you genuine feedback, tips and tricks, plus occasionally bring on guests that care about supporting you to grow your business organically and nurturing authentic relationships. Are you ready? Welcome back, listeners. This month, we've been discussing and understanding conflict, how to better prepare for conflict and resolving conflicts. Because let's face it, every single day, even if it's a small conflict, no day is perfect. Something is always going to go wrong. But how do you adapt and move forward after conflict? Some of them, like I mentioned, are smaller, so you can just kind of take a deep breath clear your mind and move on and kind of release any tension from it. But in today's episode, Sarah and I are going to talk about what to do if it's a bigger conflict and like how to be able to kind of work through that process. Sometimes it can be hard to let go, but we're all professionals. We're all adults. Hopefully we're all responsible and mature and can talk about it and figure out what to do to move forward. So Sarah's going to start us off with some strategies that will help us adapt. Yeah, so there's different strategies that you can put in place to adapt and move forward from a conflict. Because a lot of the time when people are in conflict, especially in the workplace, you tend to hold a grudge. Like when a conflict is happening, one, you don't want to be in the center of it. Another thing, you know, you feel as maybe if you're in the middle of a conflict that. It's all about you, meaning when somebody says, well, this is going the wrong way or this or that, sometimes you feel as, okay, it's all my fault, which essentially it's not. Because sometimes, you know, you can butt heads. You might not agree on things, but in order to move forward and adapt to the forever changing workplace, you got to embrace a growth mindset. Everything that happens within that conflict, you have to see as an opportunity to learn and grow from it. One of the clients that I do have, I work with a team. I believe there's like seven, eight of us on the team. And obviously, when you come on into a new team, they don't know who you are. And I feel as at the beginning of working with this team, not necessarily butting heads, but everybody like had questions in the back of their mind, like, who is Sarah? Like, who is this person? Like, why is the business owner hiring somebody outside of the team coming in? Because another thing, too, that happens a lot. And even if you're working in corporate, right, you hire somebody from out of house. But it took about a month or so before I was able to meet everybody on the team. And I think after I was able to meet everybody on the team one on one, there was more like insight. There was like a growth mindset like, hey, OK, this person's actually here to help the business grow, not just somebody off the street just thinking that she knows everything about the business. And I think there was a conflict in that because it took a while, again, to build a rapport right? So you're on a new team and now you got to build this rapport with the people that are within the workplace. And that can cause a conflict either internally or people not asking questions. So I think that's an opportunity to be able to learn and grow from it. I think with a growth mindset also to include what I'm hearing about your experience is creating a space to allow that change. My dad actually did a very good job with helping me to have a growth mindset as with seeing things as an opportunity to learn and grow. It's going to sound silly, but like when I was learning to ride a bike or my sister and we would fall over, like he would laugh, but not in a mocking kind of way that, you know, kids easily pick up on, but a ha ha, get up and do it again type thing. Almost like there's a book, like go for no or something where you try to get as many no's in like a sales conversation until you get your yes. I will find it and link it in the show notes. I read it years ago. But that's that growth mindset of learning to overcome those hurdles. In this case, Sarah, yours was overcoming like 
joining a new team and coming in and essentially shifting how the whole culture went, the whole dynamic. And that is scary and you don't know what's going to happen, but you created the space, you took the time, you saw things from their perspective and you helped guided them through the process of seeing things through your perspective. And there was a middle ground that was accomplished. Exactly. What is the saying? Teamwork makes the dream work. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, it does. It's so funny. It's, It's like, yes and no, because like, essentially, if you're working with a team, even if you're working with one person, it's your client or somebody that's helping you, like an assistant or something, you literally have to come together as a team and work things out because if you're not going to work things out together and one person's doing one thing and the other person's doing something else, that will cause a conflict. So oftentimes you got to have those conversations and get feedback. It's not necessarily negative feedback, but you know, we all have different opinions, all have different perspectives, but how can you come together and get to the common ground to where you're not butting heads? I think practicing that is the best way. Like practice listening. I do this with my kids. I will ask them random questions. So like I've asked my kids, what's something that I did that upset them today? Which is a very scary question (laughs) to ask your kids because there's no better truth tellers than a child. They'll just tell you how it is. They don't understand like they might hurt my feelings. I just want them to talk to me. And I listen to their concerns and we try and come up with something that I can do better the next day. Then I do the same thing with them is today when you were too loud during my meeting or were hitting the ball against the house and I was recording my (laughs) podcast was a little frustrating. And then we talk about how when my door is closed and other outcomes that you can do, other actions to do. And that's the feedback. We learn from our conflicts. We embrace the feedback. So again, with that growth mindset of we don't look at it as someone is shaming us or trying to be controlling, it's to make us all better and to move forward in unison. Another thing that I believe that helps is having a conversation. Like I'm talking about like a verbal conversation with somebody because you can email, you can text, but the way that the words come out, like you don't hear the tone. You don't see the people's facial expressions. And I had like a text from a client and the way that it read, it seemed like she was really, really upset. But a couple hours later, we had our team meeting and we're having a conversation about it. Calm, collective. But it's so funny because, again, I think that if there is a conflict going on, a change that needs to be made, Having a verbal conversation with somebody to be able to get that feedback and to listen to what they're saying, to me, is better than written. I'm laughing (laughs) on the inside because I miss read text messages all the time. I don't do sarcasm. It's just not my thing. I don't get it very well. It's very rare. I usually feel like, dang, (laughs) you really don't like me or whatever it is. So I use emojis to help. (laughs) communicate when I'm texting or writing, but it has almost caused a few conflicts. I'm like, are you really this upset over X, Y, Z? So assessing and then adjusting my perspective on what someone is trying to say, like taking that deeper look into what's actually going on around them or being said has helped me better understand what's going on, not just in my business, but in someone's work life, a client's goals anything that they have going on, like taking a step back with them, maybe they're stressed because they haven't met their goals. And so they're trying to adjust their own workflows. And then I just came in unintentionally and not necessarily a hurdle, but put a stop to their thought process and disrupted that mindset shift, which can be overwhelming if you're already freaking out that things aren't getting done on time. And now I just made you stop working on the thing you're trying to do. There's always, always room for improvement. You want to build this safe workplace into which you allow your business to succeed. Now, I know we talk about teams a lot, but if you really think about it, it doesn't necessarily have to be an assistant because not everybody has the means to hire somebody. But like your team, it can be a business partner. Your team can be the clients that you have. 
because you guys are working together to get to the end goal. You want to encourage the feedback. It creates a learning environment and also celebrate that progress. Like I see so many people say, I'm so excited for my client because we were able to do this. Or you can tell your team member, hey, you did a great job on this today. Like, I love what you're doing. And I think that helps with the growth mindset, helps with the feedback. And if there's something that's not working, you can assess and adjust. Encouraging feedback is actually one of my favorite things, as well as creating a learning environment. One of the things that I work on with my team is every few months, we just kind of touch base. Like we meet weekly anyway, but it's mainly about client work. So outside of that, I try to have an intentional one-on-one with them, just saying, hey, what's going on with life? How are you? Are there any tasks that you have been really enjoying lately and would like to do more of? Since they are independent contractors, they are allowed to have their own clients as well, like outside of supporting me. I'll ask them, what kind of clients are you currently looking for? Is there a niche that you're trying to tap into? What resources can I help you with? Well, hopefully I have them. If not, then we'll kind of brainstorm and look for it together and maybe even split the cost of it. I've done that before where we buy a course or something and that way we both have access to it. I think when you adapt strategies like that and learn to communicate through disagreements or just hardships, like a few episodes ago, I had mentioned one of my virtual assistants had a blackout in her neighborhood. Obviously, she was not working that day and that was overwhelming. And so like we communicated, she was nervous about telling me that she couldn't get work done. But I listened to her and then I provided the feedback. I was like, just do these things. If you can't get to like a coffee shop or your sister's house or wherever, then the rest of the team will pick that slack up. So take advantage of those growth opportunities. And then together we all move forward and kept our workplace cohesive and like tasks still got done. She was able to focus and relax. I was able to relax because I knew work was getting completed by someone else based on the strategy, like the workflows that I have in place. And it was awesome. So I think if you learn, our listeners learn to implement strategies like these, that you'll see a significant positive shift in your work environment. So our question for our listeners this week is, how are you building a culture of continuous improvement? What actions do you have in place to support you and your team to succeed. Stay tuned for next week as we dive into leadership and discuss goal setting for your business. As always, all the information and resources are in our show notes. Till next time. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. Remember, soft skills aren't just some fluffy buzzwords that get thrown around in the corporate world. They're the key to unlocking your full potential as a professional and a human being. Don't be afraid to invest in yourself and seek out opportunities to improve your soft skills. Sarah and I have a variety of workshops, online courses, and complimentary clarity calls for you to practice in real time with us. Links are always in the show notes. And be sure to join us next time for more insights, tips, and tricks to help you succeed in your entrepreneur encounter.